This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, she is a 75-year-old lady. She is having primary angle closure for which she has undergone a surgical iridectomy prophylactic about 15 years back and now she is presented for cataract surgery. The antechamber depth is extremely shallow as is shown by this biometry reading. Patient also has pseudo exfoliation. So let's try to understand few of the challenges which we may encounter during this surgery. Surgery is being done under topical anesthesia. As I'm doing the side port, we can see that the blade is grazing across the iris, suggesting the shallowness of the antechamber. As the subsequent steps are being done, let me take you through the thoughts which are going in my head. So this is a case with uh, angle closure disease as well as uh, pseudo exfoliation and the chamber depth is also not uh, very good. So I'm expecting some amount of zonular weakness in this patient. This cataract is also relatively denser, it's about grade 3 to grade 4 and there is a general sense of lack of space in the antechamber. So these are the thoughts which are going into my head. So as soon as I puncture the anti-capsule, I can see the wrinkling of the anti-capsule suggesting that the zonular health might not be very great. Quickly I switch over to my forceps which is my preferred instrument to do rexus in eyes with suspected zonular weakness. I'm aiming for rexus about 4.5 to 5 millimeter in this eye and a decent sized and well centered rexus is created. Cortical cleaving hydrodissection is one of the most important steps in eyes with uh, zonular weakness. As I do it, I'm unable to clearly see the fluid wave. I just want to go ahead and decompress the bag by pushing down on the uh, nucleus at the opposite side and, and as I'm doing it, I also want to ensure that whether the cortex nucleus complex is free from the capsular bag. And as I'm trying to nudge the nucleus in, see, I can see that the bag is also moving along with the nucleus cortex complex. So this is an indication that the cortical fibers are still not totally free from attachment to the capsular bag. So at this moment, I thought I would want to repeat the hydrodissection. So the hydrodissection cannula is just introduced once again under the anti-capsule and the hydrodissection is repeated and I can see that the nucleus is tipping up now. Now suggesting that is probably the hydrodissection is much more effective now. I want to ascertain that the nucleus cortex complex is totally free from its attachment to the capsular bag under the cover of viscoelastic using a very sharp chopper. I rotate the nucleus and ascertain that only nucleus in the cortical complex is moving and not the bag around. So this ensures and confirms that the cortical attachment to the capsular bag has totally broken and this indicates that we can proceed with the nucleus emulsification process. Now because the zonular weakness is not very pronounced, I am postponing the insertion of CTR at this stage. So otherwise zonular weakness was severe, I would have definitely considered inserting the CTR at this stage itself. Time to emulsify the nucleus. The standard vertical chop uh, maneuver is being used to divide the nucleus into multiple small fragments. It is the routine stuff, nothing special about it. Six smaller fragments are created and then each one of them is emulsified in a very controlled manner and the plane of emulsification is at the level of the pupillary plane. Time to aspirate the cortex. By manual irrigation aspiration is used to aspirate all the cortex.
Once the bag is clean, it is inflated with OVD and it's time to insert the capsule tension ring. This is the standard way in which I insert a CTR. It's a bi-manual maneuver. The left hand sense cue is used to compress the ring as the ring is being threaded into the bag. This ensures that lesser stress is being placed on the isonules in the bag during the insertion of the CTR. A multi-piece hydrophobic lens is being placed into the bag itself. I usually do IOL trap technique in eyes with much more pronounced zonal weakness but in this situation the zonal weakness was mild so I'm using the in the bag fixation of the lens in this case. OVD both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out and uh, that's it the case is done. These are the first day pictures. Thank you so much for watching and hope you found this helpful.